Okay. Now, finally, I would like to connect this old school algorithm to the new world of deep neural networks and um, would like to show one way of doing this. Uh, again, work by mainly by a physics student, um, like many of you are. Um, this was uh, Steffen Wolf and Lukas Schott uh, who did most of this, uh, of this work. And so if we remember the watershed algorithm, what's nice is it has zero shrinkage bias. So costs do not accumulate over long distances and it does not cut objects short as, um, for example, shortest path would do, but it easily bleeds out of imperfect boundaries. What's nice is that a greedy algorithm Prim's algorithm gives us the optimal solution to this combinatorial problem. Um, and one less important reason, I would say. Good. Now, one can think about making this adaptive in the following sense. Um, you've seen in this, um, previously I showed you how to grow um, a region from a seed. So because we grow a region from a seed, I do not at the outset need all edges in the whole image or the whole graph. I only ever need the edge weights that are at the boundary of my current segment as it grows further. And this means I can compute edge costs on the fly, taking into account the partial segmentation obtained previously. And it would be nice to be able to train this from ground truth. And it's actually possible. Uh, but how? Um, by unrolling all these computations and casting them as layers in a neural network. So the neural network, okay, let me zoom in a little bit. Um, the neural network gets the current segmentation, excuse me, and uh, it uh, understands where to estimate edge costs next. It uh, estimates costs for these newly accessible edges. Uh, then a prime step is being done. So my region is grown by one node. And uh, then the new edges become accessible for which a neural network again estimates costs and so on. So you can unroll this such that it looks like a recurrent neural network. And indeed, um, this is how you can run the computations in terms of Prim's algorithm, but using edge costs from a recurrent neural network. Okay, um, how to train it? So let's say that we have a predicted boundary and a ground truth boundary, and then this will inform us um, how, we sh how we should tweak the parameters in the neural network, in the recurrent neural network, to give us edge weights that will lead to a more correct segmentation. So this is one example of a structured learning problem where you don't just train the neural network directly to give you desired edge weights, but where you do take the effect of the inference algorithm, in this case, the seated watershed, into account. All right, and uh, this, actually, um, this actually works. And uh, when properly trained, um, behaves like this. Let's see if I can. Um, no. No. if I can get this movie to play for you. All right, so what do we see? Um, we see the seeds. And this is now the trade network. And 
um, here is how Prem's algorithm proceeds over time, and the neural network only ever gets to estimate the edge weights of these edges here at the periphery of the current segments. And in so doing, it takes into account what the own segment looks like so far, but also what adjacent segments look like. So especially when things um, start coming into close contact, um, the, the shape that they have already acquired can be taken into account. And what you see here, so this uh, pattern of how the image is filled, it's not really something to do with, you know, with directly how bright or, or how dark is the image. It has more to do with um, how easy is it for the network to make a, a confident decision of a pixel belonging, you know, rather to one segment or perhaps to another. All right. And so when properly trained, um, this works really well. Um, this is good. The bad thing is, well, it needs seeds. And as you, as you go to huge images, nobody wants to give seeds by hand. And finding seeds automatically is a very hard task. So um, finding seeds automatically is easy when you have um, you know, small convex objects, then finding seeds automatically is easy. But if you have something like you know, a big object, as we have in this uh, neuron kind of data, and then it gets very thin, and then it, uh, at some point it, it becomes, uh, let's say, thick again. Yeah? So if you now think of a neural network, which maybe has a field of view this big, Probably the neural network will be able to automatically put a seed here, but presumably your neural network would also put a seed there. And well, uh, it will be difficult for the neural network with its finite field of view to understand that actually this is one and the same object and that these seeds should belong to the same class. So to get rid of seeds, um, you need something else. And uh, actually, you then need a sine graph, a graph with uh, positive and negative edge weights. And um, partitioning sine graphs is an NPR problem. Um, but um, Stefan Wolf and your teaching assistant, Alberto Bailoni, have come up with a really clever solution uh, with Konstantin Papa also doing important work. So Stefan and Konstantin invented it and Alberto led the theoretical analysis. And um, there is an algorithm called the mutex watershed, which generalizes the watershed to sine graphs, and which actually means that you no longer need seeds um, in order to obtain an instance segmentation. Um, but that would um, carry us a little bit uh, far. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about the mutex watershed today. Um, but instead, I will stop here and ask for more questions. <laughs>